Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so excited and honored to have on with us today Mark McElroy. He's the founder and executive director of the Center for Sustainability Organizations. Welcome to Green is Good, Mark. Thank you. Happy to be here. Oh, uh, you know, Mark, this is your first time on. So before we get into talking about your great organization, the Center for Sustainability Organizations, can you share a little bit about your story? About you, you know, I want our listeners to learn about you. How did you even get here? Well, I have a, a long career of having worked as a consultant, management consultant for large companies around the world. And uh, after a couple of decades of that, uh, had an opportunity to meet uh, a woman here in Vermont by the name of Danella Meadows, who's a very well-known and unfortunately deceased thought leader in sustainability. And she helped me to uh, understand that most of what passes for sustainability these days, particularly in business, uh, amounts to nothing of the kind. And mm. so I was inspired to try to work on that problem. Interesting. And so when did you, f- uh, you know, when did you create and found the Center for Sustainability Organizations? 2004. Wow. And, t- and so 2004 is a lot different than 2013. It's nine years removed now. Where, where was it, where were we then as a, as a, um, uh, a, co- a country at that point with regards to sustainability, and where are we today? How has it evolved, and how has your organization evolved with it? Yeah, well, I would say uh, most would agree that the U.S. is uh, kind of lagging uh, other parts of the world, particularly uh, parts of Europe, in terms of bringing uh, rigor and uh, discipline to sustainability management in business. Uh, we're we're a little better off today than we were in 2004, but um, not much. And um, so not a, not a lot has changed in, in those years. But uh, uh, certainly more companies themselves are volunteering uh, to actively manage their sustainability performance than was the case in, in 2004. And for our listeners out there, I'm on your website. It is really a fascinating website full of uh, important information that our listeners should be looking at at some point. If you've got a laptop or a tablet and you want to follow along while uh, we have this conversation with Mark, I would highly recommend it. It's www.sustainableorganizations.org. Um, let's talk about what's on this website here, Context-Based Sustainability, or the, the short for it, CBS. What does that really mean, and what should our listeners understand about CBS? Yeah, this is the point that um, my friend Dana Meadows was make, making mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the late 90s and, mm-hmm. and uh, early 2000s. Uh, the point being that most of what passes for mainstream uh, management of sustainability in business and in society in general, for that matter, mm-hmm. uh, suffers from uh, a, uh, a problem, which is the, the absence of what we loosely refer to as context. And I, I'll give you an example. Sure. Uh, if you're a company and you're trying to uh, manage your use of water resources uh, so that your use is sustainable, uh, it would be a good idea uh, to first get a handle on what the availability of water resources is in the places where you do business. And uh, uh, surprising as it may seem, even today, most companies don't do that. They simply measure their use of water resources, set goals uh, uh, perhaps for lowering them, uh, but uh, almost never compare their use of, of water resources or set goals relative to uh, the amount of water that's, that's available. So this is all about bringing contextually relevant uh, norms or ecological thresholds into the business of managing sustainability. Gotcha. And when, and when, when, when it says CBS should focus, and again, CBS, context-based sustainability, should focus on vital capitals. Explain that, because it's so important that our listeners uh, understand where you're coming from and why, why that message is so important. Yeah, this really is important. It's uh, really fundamental to uh, the issue of sustainability and to the uh, business of managing sustainability. And it, it simply uh, stems from the understanding that sustainability is a function of what human impacts on vital resources are in the world and uh, in the 
uh, sterile language of, of academia, sometimes those resources are referred to as capitals. And so the sustainability literature is full of references to natural capital, human capital, social capital, and so forth. Uh, the point being that these are really critical resources, and what makes human activity unsustainable is uh, instances where we're putting the sufficiency of those capitals at risk. Gotcha. Now, on your website here, and again, for our, for our listeners out there that have just joined, we've got Mark McElroy on with us from uh, the, the Center for Sustainability Organizations, and it's, his website is sustainableorganizations.org. At, on the header, I see the, the, the word context is used a lot. It says context-based carbon, context-based water metrics, context-based waste metrics, context-based social metrics. Yep. How does this tie the word context back into sustainability? What about sustainability context, and what does that mean with regards to each of the subsectors you've created? Yeah, so context, again, is a, a reference to um, uh, social or ecological thresholds mm. uh, that need to be taken explicitly into account when attempting to measure, manage, or report uh, sustainability uh, performance. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of leaving uh, those uh, thresholds out of the equation, if you will, um, which, again, is uh, what... Uh, tends to pass for mainstream practice these days. And so uh, part of our mission is to continually stress the importance of uh, making sure that actual social or ecological limits are, in fact, taken explicitly into account when managing, measuring, or reporting sustainability performance. So we use that word a lot. Um, and our uh, mantra, if you will, is that we really need to get context back into the business of managing sustainability where it belongs. Ta I mean, we've had other um, uh, you know, guests on the show, and they talk about GRI, mm -hmm. Global Reporting Initiative. How does your, um, you know, how does your program, CBS, Context-Based Sustainability, differ from GRI? And if you could give an example so we could understand it better, I think that would be really great for our listeners. Okay. So uh, GRI, to its credit, uh, GRI is the Global Reporting Initiative. Right. It's, it's the source of the leading international standard for corporate uh, sustainability reporting mm -hmm. and has been around since uh, the year 2000. And from the beginning, GRI has uh, explicitly advocated for the uh, consideration and inclusion of sustainability context in uh, corporate reporting. And uh, they, in fact, refer to it uh, in those terms, sustainability context. Um, the bad news is that over the years, in our view, GRI has done a, a, a relatively poor job mm. of explaining how to do it, and uh, much less uh, any job at all in terms of enforcing it. And so consequently, uh, it is quite um, uh, likely the case that no GRI-compliant sustainability report ever produced has actually described the sustainability uh, performance of, of an organization. Uh, so that failing, if you will, on GRI's part mm. uh, is something that we've um, uh, taken up as a mission of our own uh, to try to um, fill in the blanks, if you will, so that organizations interested in doing, you know, a genuine job of uh, reporting their sustainability performance have some guidance for how to do so. And let's talk about that then. Let's then s toggle back to context-based sustainability. Mm -hmm. Talk about some co companies or organizations that have actually implemented it and use them as an example so our listeners can understand mm -hmm. the success that you're having. Okay. So uh, there, are, there are a lot of companies uh, right now that are using... Uh, what we would describe as a context-based met metric, uh, mm -hmm. a way of measuring their, um, their sustainability performance in the area of greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. Um, we have a context-based metric that makes that possible that we developed actually with Ben & Jerry's originally. Oh. Huh. And uh, there are other sources of, of similar uh, metrics, but these are metrics that uh, don't just measure uh, an organization's greenhouse gas emissions. Rather, mm -hmm. 
they first establish a threshold for what those emissions would have to be over uh, an extended period of time in order to be sustainable. And then uh, actual emissions are measured and compared to that uh, threshold. And so, uh, you know, impacts like greenhouse gas emissions, water use, solid waste, and a whole series of uh, social um, uh, uh, dimensions of performance are not just measured in absolute terms, they're measured in a way that uh, are constantly being compared to sustainability thresholds. You know, Mark, you know, this, we're, we're down to the last three, three and a half minutes or so. If, you know, we all like to look at our favorite stocks, whether it's Facebook or Google or Walmart or, or um, as you say, Ben and & Jerry's, and, 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 and a lot of great publicly traded companies um, do now reporting, reporting on sustainability. Would your, um, would your context-based sustainability be an important tool for just the general public at large and other institutional investors at looking at the, the, the potential financial health and the overall health of uh, a company that's publicly traded? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that, in fact, is um, one of the uh, areas of, of uh, intense activity in huh. our, our current work. There is a, um, a new standard being developed, uh, designed for uh, application in the capital markets, in fact, that will make it possible for uh, investors to uh, understand the sustainability performance of publicly traded companies uh, using context-based criteria. And this will be the, the first... Uh, uh, application of context-based sustainability to uh, ratings, uh, rating and ranking uh, publicly traded companies in the capital markets. And we're working with uh, the developer of that standard, which is called the Global Initiative for Sustainability Ratings, or GISR, actually out of Boston, hmm. uh, to bring context-based sustainability to the investment community. How far away is that, and, and how would that be seen? If I'm an investor, and we have lots of listeners out there that buy their 10 shares a year in a stock, or a lot more than that, actually, mm -hmm. um, when would that be available, and how would, they, how would that be actually tangible and visible to them? Yeah, the uh, the first version of that standard is going to roll out later this year, and uh, uh, it will become uh, progressively uh, more uh, specific in, in terms of um, uh, how context-based sustainability is actually being applied to uh, public companies over a period of, uh, I think it's three years, starting with this year. But um, the, uh, the application of it will show up in the form of, uh, third-party ratings. So if you're an investor and you uh, really want to understand the sustainability performance of company and companies that you're, you're considering investing in, you will be able to turn to a third-party rating agency who will provide context-based ratings and rankings of uh, public companies using this new standard. You know, Mark, shameless plug here for you, though, because you deserve it. If I'm a company out there, big or small, publicly traded, privately held, or even um, a nonprofit or a governmental entity, the, these organizations, all these types of organizations come to your website and they typically hire you to help get sustainable? Yeah. Uh, first, we're a nonprofit, and right. so you know, our, our mission, if you will, is to improve the quality of sustainability management in business and commerce. Right. And a lot of what we do, we simply give away. Uh, there's quite a bit of our work is freely downloadable from our site. Right. We also offer assistance to help companies who are interested in taking their own practices to the next level. Got it. Well, thank you again for being on today, Mark McElroy. My pleasure. Um, you know, we're so thankful you, you exist and the great work you're doing um, uh, is so important at the Center for Sustainability Organizations to learn more about Mark and his great work and to download some of his information or connect with him. It's www.sustainableorganizations.org. Mark McElroy, you are a sustainability leader and truly living proof that green is good. <laughs>